Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. I'm currently on board Azamara Pursuit and I'm going to talk about seven things that you need to know about Azamara Club Cruises before you cruise with them. So Azamara is part of the Royal Caribbean group of cruise lines. Royal Caribbean operate obviously the Royal Caribbean line, Celebrity, they have Azamara and also a major stake in Silver Sea, the ultra luxury cruise and expedition line. Azamara operates in the upmarket mid to small ship cruise categories. So they compete with lines like Oceania, Viking Cruise Lines and lines like Windstar. All of their ships are what is known as R-class ships and they're originally built for Renaissance cruise lines. They have three ships all holding around about 700 passengers. So they have the Azamara Journey, the Azamara Quest and in 2018 they added Azamara Pursuit. What does Azamara do that's different or unique to other cruise lines? Now Azamara would argue that their real focus is around destinations. There's a couple of things that Azamara do around destinations that I think are unique and different. First of all, what they call stay longer, experience more. So they call in smaller ports because they have smaller ships and they tend to have much longer stays. So for example, the cruise I'm on, which is a 10 night cruise around Greece and the Greek islands. In many of the ports, we were staying until 10 o'clock at night and in other ports, we were staying until eight o'clock at night, which enables you to get out and see much more both during the day and also into the evening. The second thing they do is lots of country intensive cruises. You'll find a lot of their cruises are called intensive. So it'll be Greece intensive or Spain intensive. So they tend to structure their cruises around a particular part of the world and call on lots of places. And again, because they have smaller ships, they can call it lots of different ports. The third thing they talk about is this real sense of immersion once you're there. So they talk about cruise global, connect local. So the idea is they have lots of excursions which really try and get you to connect with the people, the cultures, the food. And they group these into a number of different types of excursions. So for example, taste local, bike local, meet local and nights local. So the bike local, obviously bike tour. So they have bikes on board the ship, which are around about 16 bikes. So the tours go out with about 16 people. So taste local is where you'd get out and have culinary tours or local restaurant visits. Meet local is cultural exchanges with local families and residents. And of course, nights local will be where you can get out and experience the nightlife. The tour sizes are quite small. The normal tours will be around about 25 people. If it's a walking tour or it's a bike tour, they'll often focus just on having 16 people. I noticed a lot when we were traveling around at different sites on different tours, you know, we had a small group of between 16 and 20 people and other cruise lines were having 30, 40 people in their tours. They use only local tour guides which of course many cruise lines do, but local experts. And the other thing which they have on board is they'll normally have some speaker on board who will talk about the region and the places that you're visiting. They also provide port guides in every port. Personally, I felt the port guides were okay. I didn't think they were amazing. And particularly considering that Azamara is really focused on destinations, I thought that perhaps their destination guides would be very different to other cruise lines, but I felt they were quite similar. What they do do though, which is great, is in every single port of call, they will bring on board local tourist reps who will be there for a couple of hours in the morning when you arrive so they can obviously give you much more specific information, maps, advice. The other thing that they do is if the local town or the nearest town is not within easy walking distance, they always provide a complimentary transfer to get you into town. So that whole destination area is something that they do really well. So now, the other thing that they do, which is unique, they have a number of signature events. Azamara have probably four of them that I think are worth talking about. First of all, they have what is known as their As Amazing Evenings. So normally on a cruise, they'll have one evening where they take the whole ship on land somewhere and they'll have some big event. So for example, when we were in Corfu, the whole ship was taken to a beautiful park in the center of the town and a concert was laid on of local Corfu music and dancing. So every cruise will normally have some kind of as amazing evening where they try and take you out to experience again the local culture or something that's unique. The other big signature event is the white night party. One of these is held on every cruise and if it's 
great weather or in a warm climate it's held up on the pool deck and there's the most amazing spread of food and the other great twist is that normally the officers are the ones serving the food then there's dancing and singing the other big highlight is they have a crew parade where a big chunk of the crew will march on to the the deck another big signature event is the chocolate buffet which is held on deck five once during the cruise in the evenings great spread of chocolate tree the other big feature is it's normally on a sea day is they have a brunch which is held in the main dining room the discoveries restaurant so there's some of the great signature events that i think are a little bit unique and different who is Azamara best suited and best targeted for? Well, most of the passengers on board are really the baby boomer generation. So you're gonna find mostly people, their 50s, 60s, and 70s. People who are very interested in destinations and really want to have the chance to get to know a region and spend time exploring it and are pretty active in the way that they like to explore things. I would say it's not really, although it's not excluded, but it's not really a family kids kind of experience. It's very American focused so most of the travelers on board would be American. There will be a good amount of people from the UK and from Australia, but it is a very English speaking experience. And again, it's with a sort of an American twist of so the entertainment. The quizzes tend to have a slight American bias and tinge them. The fares are largely all inclusive. So what does that mean? Well, the accommodation is obviously covered. All gratuities are covered with the exception of the spa. All of your food in your main dining room, the Discoveries restaurant is included in the buffet restaurant, which is known as the Windows Cafe. There's also various snacks which are available during the day in places like the living room and also at the Mosaic Cafe. Room service at any time of the day is also included within your fare. There are two Speciality dining restaurants, which unless you're in a suite, you pay to go to. So you have Aqualina, which is a beautiful Italian restaurant, and you have Prime C, which is the steak restaurant. So they cost $30 per person to eat there. When it comes to drinks, these are again largely included. So you have a selection of wines at meals that you can choose from. You also have a wide range of spirits. Bottled water is available and included. Sodas are all included. And specialty teas and coffees are also included. Now what's very important, there is a list of specialty drinks and cocktails and beers that are actually included. Also, you have a mini bar in your room which will have some sodas and water that is included. Now, if you're in a suite, you do actually get spirits included within your mini bar. Of course, going to things like the white party and those amazing evenings, that's all included and the drinks there are included. They do have a self-service laundry which is free to use. So what's not covered? Well, I've already mentioned specialty dining. Excursions are not covered. Now the excursions, because of the smaller groups, they are perhaps a little bit higher than on some of the bigger mass market lines where they have many more people. So obviously they can, you know, amortize the cost of things like the guides and the buses more. So the cost of excursions is a little bit higher and excursions are not included. Wi-Fi is not included unless you're in a suite where there are some minutes included depending on the grade of suite that you've got. What are the range of facilities and the kind of entertainment you can expect on board? In terms of dining, you've got the main restaurant, the Discoveries restaurant, the Windows Cafe, the two speciality restaurants, Aquilina and Prime C. You also have the patio, which is on the pool deck. In terms of bars and lounges, you have the den area, which includes the spirit bar. Now this in, on the pursuit, is also partly where the casino used to be. The ships, other ships still have the casino on, although I believe they are gonna be removed and the den is gonna be introduced much more across the rest of the fleet. You have the living room, which on many ships is known as the crow's nest, which is a drawing room, which is where the library is. There's a bar outside the pool. In fact, all of the restaurants have their own bars. So the cabaret lounge is the main entertainment area and in here is where they'll have the guest entertainers and they'll also have the four onboard singers that will perform a series of singing and dancing shows. Now in terms of other entertainment, there is music across the ship. So they have a little trio that plays up in the living room. They have a pianist down in the spirits bar and then they have a daily program packed full of activities. Now these activities tend to be fairly traditional. So there'll be lots of quizzes and competitions and there'll be various meet and greets, solo travelers meet and greets, uh, LGBT meet and greets, 
on Azamara Club Cruises, it's pretty casual, it's pretty relaxed. And a couple of things that really illustrate that. So first of all, the dress code. There's not a strict dress code at all. So they do talk about smart casual resort dress code, but it's fairly informal. So in the restaurant in the evening, for example, they, you could wear jeans if you want, you can wear polo shirts. They ask you just don't wear distressed jeans. You can't wear shorts in the evening. People tend to dress up a little bit smart, so the gents might wear sort of slacks or something like that and long sleeve shirts. A few people you will find with jackets. Ladies will tend to you know, dress in you know, fairly smart clothes, but it's not a very formal evening. There's no gala evenings. A lot of people when they go to specialty restaurants, because they might be doing that for a more special occasion, you'll find a few more gents in jackets, ladies with perhaps more cocktail style dresses on. Also in terms of dining, it's all open seated dining. You just, if you go into the main dining room, you'll go and if you want to share with people, you can. If you want a table for two, you can. There's lots of tables for two. The service is good, but it's not very in your face. It's not very formal. If you do like a much more formal dressing up kind of cruise, then Azamara Cruises is probably not exactly right for you. The great thing about Azamara is they have a huge range of accommodation. So if you want to travel relatively inexpensively because it appeals to you, you can. There are inside cabins, there are ocean view cabins, there are balcony cabins, and balcony are the main type of cabin on board. That's the one that I was cruising in. You then move into suites, and of course, you didn't, and they get progressively bigger. So there's a wide range. So you can go from inside right through to suites. Azamara Club Cruises is really focused on immersing people into destinations. So their real focus is destinations. They have very country intensive cruises. They try to go to more unusual ports. They try to stay in those ports as long as they possibly can. And they try to give excursions and tours which really let you connect with the people and the culture and the history of the place that you travel to. So you'll find a lot of the tours are actually around experiencing rather than just looking at. So if you are interested in history and sites, they have those tours, but they have lots of tours which are around taste local, bike local, and really get you out and meeting people. The, they are uh, sort of a luxurious cruise line in terms of the style, the approach, the decor, the service, but it's not stuffy, it's not formal. Asimara Club Cruises has lots of law people. On the cruises that I've been on, you know, people have been on it four, five, six, seven times and they've already booked more cruises. Some people are doing three a year. People are very passionate about the whole Asimara concept. So if you're interested in very much in destinations, going to smaller ports, staying there longer, not too stuffy, not too formal, it is a little bit more on the premium side than the mass market lines. So it is gonna cost a little bit more, but obviously you then have those pros of doing it that way. Hopefully you found that helpful and it's given you much more insight into Azamara Club Cruises and help you decide if this is the cruise line for you. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you watched many more of my Tips to Travelers videos and hopefully it will help you make even more of your precious travel time and money.